Hey friends, I thought I'd jump on here live and answer some of your questions about homeschooling or home education or basically everyone has their kids at home so we need to do something with them questions. Um, last week I asked some questions, I asked some people to post questions on my Facebook page so I will answer those first. But if you have any questions about homeschooling, home education, resources, ideas of things to do with kids, um, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get to them too. But I'm going to go over some ones from my Facebook page. So welcome. I see you guys there. Okay. So first of all, Michaela asked, um, what are some tips for a mom brand new to homeschooling with no teaching background? Um, tips for getting lessons across effectively. And then she says, my daughter is four. So we're starting preschool for short lengths of time a few days a week. So I would say Michaela, um, like you and most of the parents out there that are now having to home educate their children, we have no teaching background. But the thing is, um, with homeschooling, people go to school and get a teaching background because they need to know how to educate a classroom of kids. Um, but basically, if you've been a parent for any amount of time, you already know how to teach your kids. You've taught them how to go use the bathroom, go on the toilet, um, hopefully stay in bed. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that we do that are teaching our kids. I think people get worried because they think of a classroom teacher and all this knowledge. Um, so don't feel like you have to do that. I remember when I first started homeschooling my kids, I had, honestly, I had little desks in this room. They would sit there. I would buy this big box of curriculum and try to get them to do it all. They would get frustrated and I would get frustrated. So a couple of things that before I answer a question about tips for um, brand new homeschooling moms, realize that when people are spending from eight o'clock to three o'clock in a classroom, they are educating 25 to 30 kids. They need that much time. You have everyone coming in, sitting down, group activities, roll call, breaks, recess, maybe half the kids are understanding, half the kids aren't. That is not what you need to do with home education. Um, so home education is almost like private tutoring. And sometimes you have one kid, two kids, three kids. I currently have five kids that I am teaching at home right now. So it's very different than having a classroom with a lot of kids. Um, so just know that. And usually the amount of time that a classroom teacher can give to each individual kids is only it's only a couple minutes a day well you can do that if you spend two hours a day with individualized attention on three kids that's a lot more than just a couple minutes so i love classroom teachers i have lots of friends with classroom teachers i think it's amazing but this is just a completely different thing so don't feel like you have to have all this education basically i am learning along with my kids and that's what i love about so much of the curriculum it has everything that i need um, but a lot of what I do, I don't even do a lot of the activities in the curriculum. I just read out loud to my kids. We talk about the books. I pull out crafts materials. Uh, we bake something. We go over a recipe. I have them read it out loud, follow directions, um, take measurements. So, so much is just what we know how to do as parents already. It's spending time with them. It is making sure they understand what we're talking about. Um, reading stories together, pursuing their interests, which is a great time. Some families right now have kit, you know, packets that that hope they are that are sent home that they're having to go through. But a lot of people don't have that, and they're just trying to figure out what to do. There's so many free resources that are available now. I know Adventures in Odyssey, their um, audiobooks, they have, you can get, um, I think, 30 days free. Audible, if you look up Audible Stories, there's a lot of free storybooks. There's a lot of zoos doing presentations. There's a lot of artists and people doing concerts. Take advantage and make a list of things that you want to do and let the kids pick. This is a perfect time for them to explore things that they're interested in. So, Michaela, to answer your question, you're already teaching, you've already been teaching your four-year-old um, for all for her whole life or his whole, whole life. Um, just know that just keep doing those same things. So don't feel like you have to have a teaching background. Also, when they're four, like if you're going to spend 30 minutes a couple times a day reading a story, going over colors, numbers, and shapes, that's enough. 
um, even five or six, don't feel like, again, you have to spend all day from eight o'clock to three o'clock doing activities with them. You don't. Think of fun things that you can do. Um, and then, you know, just have that time to sit outside, to play catch. I spent about 45 minutes playing catch with my nine-year-old boy the other day. Those are all fun things. Um, and also during this time, even more important than the math sheets and the reading, they need that relationship with you. There's a lot of scary things going on, so they really need that time with you. Okay, and then um, Michaela had asked that on my Facebook page, and then my friend Stephanie Whitson um, recommended some books, um, Better Late Than Early by Dr. Raymond Moore, um, and then The Hurry Child. So again, we don't need to rush them through. We don't need to learn, you know, have them. This is what the first graders need to know. This is what the second graders need to know. Again, if you are schooling the whole classroom, those are guidelines. But I've had some kids that have jumped way ahead. They just got something, moved on, got it, moved on. Um, my daughter, Leslie, was, you know, by the time she was 16, we'd gone everything her senior year and she was able to start college. I've had some kids... Um, one of my little ones didn't learn to read till he was nine because he's dyslexic. So take each kid at their individual pace, which you can do because you're not having to worry about 25 kids. Um, and then also one thing that really helped me, another homeschool mom told me about this, like if your child is struggling with a concept like, um, like doing, um, consonant blends or um read being able to read chapter books moving from picture books to chapter books or understanding multiplication just take a couple months set it to the side and try again later and i remember this other um, homeschool mom telling me this and i'm like wait no you know third grade we're supposed to teach multiplication or whatever it is and just pushing that to the side and doing it later i found all of a sudden it'll just click for that child so each child learns differently. Each child, maybe I have one child that his math, he does, he just picks it up like crazy. He struggled with reading. So just know that, that you can take those things individually. Um, and then uh, Mariah asked, she said, I know your curriculum is literature based as in, as in mine. When your kids have lots of energy, when you're trying to read out loud, they're constantly interrupting, what do you do? Um, and this is a great question. Uh, I do a lot of read out loud. I love a sunlight curriculum. I love getting books from the library, reading those. We love the YWAM, um, which is YWAM missionary stories. So we do a lot of reading out loud because I could read to five kids all at the same time. Um, we, I don't make them sit there and just not do anything. They can have Play-Doh, perler beads, coloring, drawing. Um, so what I found when their hands are getting busy, then um, when their hands are keeping busy, then they can concentrate better. Um, some of my kids have a hard time following along, so I'll have them draw the picture, draw what they're seeing in their mind, what I am telling them about. So that's another thing you can do. Hand the paper and pens and say, I'm gonna read this, this historical fiction story and you could draw the picture what do you see and then later they could show an older sibling or their dad or um, over a, a video call their grandma this is what we learned today and that might help them too so don't feel like when you're reading out loud they just have to sit there and not do um, anything yeah you could they do Legos and coloring um, pages they could even you know sometimes if they're able to listen um, they could do somersaults in the living room as I sit on the couch you know their mind is following the story and um you know there are some times like when we are doing a family devotion around the dinner table well i want them to sit there and just listen without playing with play-doh but there are also times when we're reading a couple chapters in a book it's totally okay to be playing with legos and i can tell when they're listening they'll be like gasping or commenting at all the right spots um so know that they are paying attention and you can even pause and ask questions and if they keep interrupting i have some kids that will like to go on rabbit trails and interrupt. Um, so just know, you know, I can say, okay, you get two questions and then you have to wait till this chapter is done to ask any more. Okay. Um, Danielle said, do you um, have advice for someone who wants to homeschool but can't afford it with multiple kids? Yeah, Danielle, that is a great question. Um, what I do is I find, and Danielle, you could put in here, I don't know how old your kids are. Um, what the, their age difference is, but I would um, 
there's so many free things online that you can use for your kids and find as much as you can get for free. But then also like books that you can read out loud, you could get Kindle books. Um, you know, the little house on the prairie series teaches a lot about history or, um, you know, whatever books that you're reading, you could read out loud to multiple ages. And then, um, right now, like Khan Academy has free videos. We will go on YouTube. The other day we were studying, I brought seashells back from the gift store in Florida. We were looking about different creatures and what were in there. We would just go to YouTube and search. So a lot of things you don't have to buy a complete curriculum at all. There's free worksheets, free math worksheets, free videos, um, cheap Kindle books, all those things you can do. I would focus on the older kids, making sure they get what they need, and then using a lot of those free resources for the younger kids. Um, but if you put your, their ages in, I can even point you a different direction too. And then also maybe you might have homeschool friends that can lend you stuff. I have garage full of um, curriculum, if people need it, like, <laughs> I'd be happy. Come, you can come look through my stuff. Uh, I will hand you Clorox wipes and you can wipe it down and look through my homeschool stuff. There's a lot of homeschool parents that have stuff that they'll be willing to lend out. Okay, Lauren asked, um, we do the Scholastic online videos and had them do an activity with Legos that were related to the video we watch. That is a great thing. Um, and it's so fun because I have a book called prayers that changed history and one of my friends Margie um, and it goes through different people in history and how they prayed and how history was changed but one of my friends um, Margie she actually had her son build a Lego I think it was his idea build a Lego like a picture with a little guy in a scene to go with whatever um, person in history that we were they were talking about in that book so you can totally do that um, let them draw paint, um, create Lego scenes to go with the books that you're writing. And this really will um, get kids excited because again, they don't have to sit in a desk. There's not 25 kids that you're trying to educate at once. There might be two or three or we have five. They can do stuff and interact. Um, so Danielle, so two and four and 10. So basically I would just look for stuff for the 10 year old. Um, and there's so much free stuff right now. And then the four year old and the two year old are just like coming along. And that's the cool thing. When I was teaching my older kids to read, um, my one of my daughters learned to read at three because I was teaching her brother who was six. You know, she was just sitting there. It was just games that we were playing and things. So I would focus on doing stuff for the 10 year old and then maybe, you know, find some free color sheets or worksheets. You can get rice for the four year old and have them practice writing letters and a rice on a cookie sheet. Um, you could do Play-Doh and make shapes out of letters. There's even um, like uh, Play-Doh that you can make just with flour and and salt and water. So different things. Focus on the 10 year old and then the two and four year old they are just going to have a ton of fun. But there's so many free resources that um, you're not going to need to spend a lot of money. Okay, feel free to ask more questions. I'm going to go through um, some more questions on here. Okay, so um, so Martha asks, when you need outside help with homeschooling, what are some creative ways to pay for it? And that's really good questions. Um, so right now we're not letting anyone in our house still have to share <laughs> different things we've done in the past. So one of my friends, she was a retired um, school teacher and she volunteered to tutor my daughter in her math for her ACT for free. And she just, um, it's a sweet friend of mine. And we just met at a coffee shop. I would drop my, I took some of my kids to therapy. And because she was retired, um, she just wanted to do that as a, a loved gift. But I have another friend who was um, on maternity leave. And I would pay her like $20 an hour to come over and um, again, teach her writing to my kids um to uh she also mentored my daughter on her act stuff so she was willing to do that for that's a pretty inexpensive thing but she was a stay-at-home mom um I, another friend too i had her as a math tutor for a time again a stay-at-home mom so there's people out there and right now you can do it over skype or video calls people are home maybe they would love to help your kid with their math homework um, for an hour. It was fun, I was at a writer's conference once and there was um, 
a guy there, an attendee, and he tutored his grandson in math. So think of people that would be willing to help. They would just do it because either they have time in their hands, they want to help, or maybe a stay-at-home mom, just a little extra money um, would be helpful for that. And also you can, once we're not all self-quarantined, you could get together with other friends. I have an art teacher that comes to my house, and I have another friend that comes and brings her daughter, and we have awesome art lessons. All right. Um, well, Natalie asked, this is before we were all self-quarantined. She asked about the disadvantages of homeschooling through high school. Um, I really don't see a lot of disadvantages. I think there's a lot of advantages. I guess a disadvantage if your kids are um, super social. You can be a walk through if you want. I'm just doing a Q&A video. Um, if your kids are super social, they maybe have challenges that they're not spending time with friends every day, or maybe there might be classes um, that you feel that you can't teach, that you may, might need to bring someone in, and that might be um, a challenge. But um, I found when we brought, because even uh, Maria, when she was a sophomore, we started homeschooling her, um, just her sitting around with us as I read out loud to the other kids. We worked on writing together. Um, she did a lot of independent reading. We saw her ACT scores jump in huge ways. I'm talking like her reading score went from a 19 to like a 28 or 29. I forgot now, but it was, I think it was 28 because it was a nine point jump. We saw her, her ACT scores jump and it was from me reading out loud, her doing a lot of independent reading. Um, you know, she wasn't moving from class to class to class. She was getting a lot more language into her mind and hearing um, me read uh, books it just really helped her so I think it's so many times we think that um, we aren't adequate but me reading them those books aloud really helped her and um, I've also because you know we're in Arkansas so I know exactly what classes I need to graduate and so we'll make sure like they need a health unit and so I went and got some curriculum and they're doing workbooks in this health unit they need a foreign language we're doing German in Rosetta Stone. So there's a lot that we can do um, that you can do from home. Okay. Um, and then Diana asked, what do you do when you have a student that um, absolutely hates reading and writing? And I know some of my kids I've mentioned before have really, really struggled with reading and that's why I read out loud a lot. Um, and I found the more I read out loud, then just the patterns of language, it's books that they may not be able to read, the level that they may not be able to read themselves, I'm able to read to them and they learn vocabulary. Sometimes they'll even ask like, what does that word mean? And we'll be able to talk about that. Um, so, you know, we, we do want to work at reading and sometimes then, I don't know if you've got um, the kids tested for maybe some reading challenges, um, like, like dyslexia, sometimes it's just really, really hard and it's easier when I read out loud and eventually I found that they do and they can pick it up. And for writing, um, I would, I, I think a lot of parents, um, you know, they don't like their writing workbooks. They don't like writing in questions. And I would say 90% of the time I let my kids either tell me the answer circle the answer. We'll even go through a workbook page and, you know, they're supposed to fill in the blanks. If they can tell me the answers, I'm not going to have them spend time filling in and fighting with them to fill in those words. If they can tell me if it's supposed to be this or that or apron or chef that fills in that blank, if they could just tell me about it, I will move on to the next workbook sheet. I think sometimes we pick battles over things that don't need to have battles. Um, and I can see, again, if you're in a school, when you have a lot of people um, where they need to turn in their homework, you need to have the answers written down. But I do a lot of just tell me the answer, um, read this book, explain what happened in the story. Is they're learning it um, and then focus on the actual writing time for things like creative writing, um, doing a writing journal that might be fun that you're not going to grade their spelling. At that moment, um, you're just going to let them write about silly things, um, you know, and so really don't feel like you have to have them fill in the blanks of all these 
uh, workbooks and that, I think so many times we're fighting and having battles over things that we don't need to have battles on. Again, enjoy reading stories together. Let them be creative. They're, and maybe if you have a child that's really struggling with writing, um, let them tell you the story and you can either type it or write it. And I've done that too. I've typed it in the computer and they have that creative creativity in there. And sometimes it's just hard getting it out. Um, so, all right. Um, another question was, um, someone, Karen was considering homeschooling, but they like to socialize and be around other kids. Well, now everyone is in our home. Again, these questions were from last week. So <laughs> things are changed so much. Um, first of all, I think one thing I love about social socialization is there are so many homeschool activities. Um, and Diana, I just, I don't know if you're here before, but I just answered your question about reading and writing. So you might have to watch the replay. Um, but there are so many activities from science classes and art classes and co-ops and sports teams. My you know, kids play on both homeschool sports teams and, um, you know, county or city sports leagues. There's, my kids are never, there's, there's always more stuff to do than we have time to do in the homeschooling world. Um, they were just, they finished, we finished homeschool basketball and homeschool cheer, um, which we were many nights a week. They're with their friends, they're playing basketball, they're cheering. Um, so there's a ton of activities. So a lot of people think socialization is a problem which I mean now is the biggest challenge because everyone's having to stay home but even now you know we're finding ways to video call people to bake cookies and um, drop them off on the neighbor's doorstep or finding ways to connect but um, also I found that my kids can also connect with people of all ages they're not just with a classroom of kids just their age all day long they learn to interact with people of all ages um, in fact, our girls cheer team this year, the youngest cheerleader was four and the oldest was my, one of my daughters who was 17. So that was super cool. Um, so just know that there's plenty of ways to socialize. And even now when we're all in the social distancing, there's ways to socialize. In fact, I just started a private Facebook group, um, called, um, kids reading to kids. And it's on my Facebook page um, where my kids and anyone's kids can post videos of them reading stories to each other. So Danielle said, I live in a small town. So how do you find these homeschool activities with other homeschoolers? So I think even in small towns, there, there might be some homeschool groups. Um, you know, maybe just post on Facebook or Instagram, whatever social media, what activities are there. You could also search and see if there's any homeschool activities um, in your area. And we live in uh, Bryant, which is um, like 16,000 people. In your town might even be smaller than that, but even small um, towns, there, there's probably other homeschool moms. And when I lived in Montana, there was a homeschool co-op, but we lived like a 30 minute drive in the country. And so I just had one other homeschool mom where on Tuesdays she would take the kids. I think she did history with them. And on Thursdays I took the kids and did science. So you could even find one other homeschool mom or a couple homeschool moms. You could trade kids. You could do stuff together, bake together, do art together. Um, so, you know, there, but there, you'll probably be surprised when you start looking around that there's probably a lot more than you expect. Okay, then another um, question that I get a lot and I've been getting is what does your homeschool schedule look like? Um, again, sleeping in, reading out loud, um, spending time together, taking breaks, doing independent work. That's it. And then maybe you know, art, like art and weaving those things in. Um, I don't do the, we're going to read from this time to this time. We're going to, you know, do Bible study from this time to this time. We always start with the Bible first because I want to make sure we get that in. Um, sometimes we'll go over scripture verse. Sometimes we'll do a color sheet with a, a Bible verse. Um, we'll, we have prayer journals. We'll write in our prayer journals. Um, we'll read a devotional book. So we always do that first and then we'll do some read out louds together, all together as a family. And even the older kids love when I'm reading, you know, Ramona and Jesus. We, I did Encyclopedia Brown as a read out loud. Um, we, we just finished a couple weeks ago. I had to explain what an encyclopedia is, which is hilarious. But 
um, even my 17 year old and my 15 year old wanted to sit there and listen because they're like, oh, I remember these books. So read out loud and then we'll take a time of break after the read out louds and then we'll do independent work. Um, and some of my kids can do independent work more independent. And some of my kids really need me to sit there and work on every single question with them and that's okay. Um, and then we'll do like art together, an art kit, an art project. Um, they play outside, we cook together. So just know that it doesn't have to be, again, like a classroom where you're filling in all these slots. Um, okay. So I have a one-year-old and I want to start helping her learn things, school reading, what do you suggest? So one year old, read out loud a lot, a lot of little books. And sometimes they'll sit there for three pages. That's okay. Just reading out loud to those babies um, really makes a difference in them being readers when they get older. So just have fun. And then my six year old is kindergarten and is autistic and CAS. So he struggles in English and reading, but makes A's in math, science, and history. Oops. Ah. Um, so it's definitely pick your battle situation at my house. Luckily, he likes to be read to and the rest of his struggles in the subject are addressed in speech therapy and occupational therapy. Yes, Lauren, yes. So what people don't know is like my kids go to speech therapy um, and occupational therapy for reading help. So speech therapy is often processing. It's not just the words coming out of their mouth. Um, and you could go to therapy for that to get help. And so I know I would have battles teaching my kids to read. And then I realized two of them had eye tracking issues. Their eyes were not tracking together, which is a problem because one eye would be looking at one word and one eye would be looking at another word or letter or sound. Um, and then, uh, and then I found out all three of them were dyslexic. <laughs> so all three of my younger ones. So here I am struggling. And so for the reading, I read out loud, we'll do fun activities and math and all those things. And then their speech therapist, thankfully, was working on all the really you know, sound blends and that kind of stuff. And I'm so thankful. And ours was, in cover, cover, was covered by insurance, which was awesome. So I love how you're saying, um, you know, again, we don't want to pick our battles. The things that they love doing let them explore those, have fun with those, the things that are they're struggling in. Maybe, again, instead of sitting down and writing a story, have them speak a story to you if it's really a challenge, but they have all that creativity. Or if they don't want to sit down and do a science worksheet, watch a video on the internet, get books, well, the library, when the library is open again, or a lot of stuff is available online now. So just know that um, don't sit there and fight and fight. Find ways to grow your kids' strengths and then if you can, bring others alongside to help with their weaknesses. All right, um, I think those were all my questions. If you have more questions, you can leave them here. You could leave them on my Facebook page. Um, I will jump on again, but just know that what your kids need most is you. Um, your engagement, your encouragement, your eye contact, um, sitting down, getting them to cuddle up with you, read a story, enjoy things together, find a documentary that you can watch together. Your kids, kids need you the most. Um, don't stress so much about, um, hey, there's my favorite person and his wife is Mr. Steve. You're my favorite. Okay. So I'm glad you liked the advice. <laughs> um, but um, just know that, oh, and by the way, five in a row. Excellent curriculum. I should have brought some curriculum in here. Go check out five in a row. Our kids are going to be doing more five in a row because we just love it so much. Okay. So what five in a row is is you have a storybook that you read five days in a row and every day there's you pull out history or geography or um, a recipe or writing assignments to go with that. So great, great curriculum there. But again, what I'm saying, your kids need you the most. And now that I have older kids that are adults that we love video calling um, for my daughter that lives in Europe, my sons are over all the time. We have that relationship because we spent that time together. We learned together. I learned 
And I would tell them like, I've never heard this before. How come I didn't learn this when I was in school? Um, that time that you have with them makes the biggest difference. Yeah, like Steve said, um, snuggle, read, talk, laugh, invest um, in a more comfortable sofa. <laughs> yeah, sofas are the best. So that's just my encouragement. But if you have any other questions, leave them either on this post or on my Facebook page. I'll be jumping on more just to encourage you during this time. All right. Thank you, friends.